How are you? Hi, Natasha. Look at you looking pretty as ever. Thank you. <laughs> For my uh, mustard jacket, you know? All right. That's the color. It's cool. Yeah, we would have been uh, twinsies. But now I'm going to let you do your thing with your fashion today. It's all about you. <laughs> all right. I'll take it. <laughs> you, Natasha? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. I said, how are you? I am well. I am well. I'm, I'm enjoying and trying to uh, make the best of the last few weeks of sunshine here. I hear you. Uh, and the calm before the storm for me in the accounting world. So this is this is my the good time of year for me. Ooh, so you're going to have to talk to us about what's good about it this time of the year for you as far as the county is concerned, because you have two seasons. You have the end of the year, and then you also have the beginning of the year, the first quarter-ish, I think, or is it second quarter, second quarter? Well, the end of the year is good, meaning it's more of, it's, it's actually more of a law for us now this time of year. Um, it's planning and um, just kind of maintenance with the clients. Is that first quarter that is nightmarish? Um, oh. It's time to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you have more fun with the planning part, huh? Uh, yes. Figuring yes. out. It all sounds good, and I have wonderful plans of how smooth it's going to go. <laughs> and then, and then until it actually and then reality sets in. <laughs> reality kicks in. Now you have a unique specialty, don't you? So first of all, let's talk about what you do for a living, what that title is, and what's unique about what you're doing. Absolutely. Um, what I do, first of all, well, for 15 years or so, I was an auditor in public accounting. Mm -hmm. And I specialize with with um, nonprofits and union and small businesses. Um, so after 15 years of being the go-to person, um, and, and quite honestly, what I found as an auditor was that I actually spent more time helping my clients get prepared to be audited right. than I actually auditing right so I decided to spin off and do my own thing so I'm no longer an auditor but I work directly with the nonprofits and with my unions and help them prepare for their audits gotcha. um, what makes me unique and my sort of specialization is that I'm a certified fraud examiner so what that means is when I come into my client's office and when I'm working with them hand in hand, it's with that expert knowledge of the areas and um, the potential for fraud. And so that's, you know, one of the things that gives me a leg up on, on mm. others. And I know the nonprofit world very, very well. I've been doing right. it for years. Mm -hmm. I've gone through extra training um, and spent the time focusing on how best to protect my clients and how to equip them with the processes and procedures that they need to avoid fraud. Right. And you know what? You're 100% right about that. With my company specializing in certain unique uh, services and skills for the nonprofit as well, we have a great success rate in fundraising for our clients. And... I have a source that is government employed and I know through them that believe it or not, a lot of people don't realize that nonprofits um, are the number one fraudulent business activities in this country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Number and one. Far too often. And I also, you know, work with unions, but in both cases, the issue is it's not their money. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times some of it is just mismanagement. Yes. A lot of times, you know, the organizations are small, so mm -hmm. they're working with not enough people. So yeah. the, there are not adequate checks and balances yeah. in place to protect the assets 
and you know the the person who started the mission they're focused on the mission i agree i agree and what's happening at the storehouse you know that's true that's true not what they think it is that's true i agree with you 100 percent. because let's face it and this is not to bash nonprofits because obviously i have a soft spot for them absolutely but they are a dime a dozen mm -hmm. come regularly and mm -hmm. coming so much where it's a struggle where do i donate who do i give my my commitment to i got this yes. person coming for me that person coming for me they're doing this and they're doing that and stuff like that now because we specialize in strategic everything strategic planning strategic marketing um we're all about strategy and we even present them with strategic moves for partnership you want strategic partners because at the end of the day we have to remember that these are humans running these nonprofits. Absolutely. and sometimes they lose sight trust me when i tell you her girlfriend I come from the pharmaceutical background and I felt many times in the corporate world of the pharmaceutical industry that they lost sight of why they existed. It was to find a cure for people that were sick with certain diseases. And instead they're on their ego band trying oh, to, to leave a footprint intentionally. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can strive for a legacy. Uh-oh. <laughs> We can strive for a legacy. Oh, jeez. But we need to be mindful of the why we do what we do. Absolutely. We, Absolutely. Need to be we that. cannot forget our why. And That's the people who are depending on us, around us, in whatever service line or, of industry that we're working in. That's right. That's right. I'm turning this ringer down. Um, if I turn things off, then I can't hear you and talk to you. <laughs> so I turned my ringer down so it won't interrupt us anymore. Absolutely. So going back to the nonprofits, a lot of it is because they just don't know. And, and the ones that don't know are in that bucket of a dime a dozen and their heart means well. Their heart means well. They started it for it a reason. Takes a lot of work and exactly. building and input besides, you know, the heart and the feeling. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of strategy. Structure. Um, to, and structure, absolutely. And if you don't put those things in place, you put yourself in a position to, to fail. You certainly do without realizing. Even if you have all the heart in the world and you know your mission is a good mission, if you don't have the proper, you know, structure, foundation, setup, you know, finance, support, legal support, all of the things the right that resources in place. to help them get you know moving forward and with the strength that they need, absolutely. It's, it's an uphill battle for sure. It truly is. In fact, um, I was just in a meeting a couple of weeks ago where, you know, we were talking about how the board, now everybody are doing things in an effort to legitimize themselves, but in a fashionable way, not in a structured way. I got a board, I got a board. But well, who's yeah. the board members? Are they your friends, your yeah. followers, your fan base? Do they know what their obligations are as a board member? Or did they just yeah. sign up to say that they can have their name? I'm on the board. I'm on our board, yeah. The, you know, whatever <laughs> nonprofit, but do they know what their expectations are? Do you have expectations of them? What they um, yes, and, and also, um, are they qualified for yes. the role that they have? Yes. So that's honestly where I sort of found my business niche is wow. because the reality is when I was auditing these nonprofits, mm. the people who are in charge of these organizations that are getting hundreds and thousands of dollars of grant money 
or you know donations or support just I can't you know explain it any other way other than just saying that they weren't qualified they didn't have the background and the knowledge that they needed to be able to do what they were doing so in essence I had to come in and do their job in order to do my job you know, Natasha, it's funny, too, because I don't think the nonprofits out here understand that the transparency that they have to have either. You yeah. have to show, you have to be public, unlike other businesses or operations, you have to be public about your numbers. And yes. I know personally, well, public, I, especially because you're supposed to file your annual 990 yes. every year yes. so should ideally be prepared by an accountant or somebody who's able to attest to that information being correct because That's the whole right. public who you're hoping you know is wanting to donate to you yeah of, of, of information about you that's so true and I know for firsthand with my clients to a fault I hold them accountable to transparency and I haven't been very well liked in many cases because <laughs> and I said you do realize you're asking people so I specialize in major donors my goal is for us to get to the point of mega donors my success rate with my company is 70 to 77 percent of a margin increase for our nonprofit clients and oh, oh absolutely but it comes with responsibility yes i'll help you get that money but you mm -hmm. have to do it with integrity and trans accountability accountability and transparency and mm -hmm. i i remember several times having talks with clients of mine and saying well you know you people want to know you're asking for a chunk of money from these people and mm -hmm. people want to know number one that you are able to manage the funds properly yes and they yes. want to see that people also want to know that the funds are going where you say it's going most importantly yes and then people who makes a contribution this is a big kicker People who make contributions and say, for example, Natasha, if I come to a foundation that is your client and I say, you know what, I believe in your cause, I believe in what your mission is, and, and I believe you, I want to help you accomplish that. I want to make a contribution of 5,000, 10,000, 20,000, whatever. However, I wanted to go specifically in this area because I feel mm -hmm. as though there's some personal attachment for me in that space and it will help you towards reaching your goals right. i need to know that that money's going to go there so that's yeah. why being public with your numbers are absolutely crucial. Yes. yes and someone like you is is what's important for these nonprofits to have you know to keep that incredible uh that integrity integrity yes and intact yes oh my and god i can send so many people your way well please do <laughs> I'm, I'm here for them um but you know similar to you you know i i've made this transition because i want to help them right. i want to see more of these nonprofits successful getting all those grants well of course when you get all those grants right. from this phones, then you need to then make sure that you're fulfilling your compliance requirements from the grantees who are giving those grants and that's you know that's what i want to help organizations to do it is not okay to just kind of throw your your records in a drawer and have mounds of papers of you know, the, these are all the things that I that I spent and I'll give it to my tax person at the end of the year. You can't run an organization like that. No. Nope. Um, so that that is exactly, you know, sort of where I'm at. You know, I, it, 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 it is a, a passion for me. As I said, I saw the struggle so much when I was on the other side. And of course, I'm an auditor. They hate to see me come. Can't wait to see me leave. 
because I'm there to go through all the stuff and to tell them everything that they're doing wrong. Tell yeah. them what if they do not tighten up their finances, yeah. their organization is going to be in jeopardy, if not from the IRS, from the people who are giving them the money and and with expectations that they're not right. meeting. That's right. So, you know, I'm, I'm very happy with my decision to go to the other side. Now I'm the ally. I'm here for you before anybody else comes in. I'm here to work alongside of my clients right. to help them be prepared, not you know, December 29th, let's figure out what happened all year long. I, I partner with them to be there with them along the way because the reality is if they focus on their finances and have all of that in order early on, right. you know where, how, where your margins are, you know how you're operating, and you actually then have room and capacity to, to do more, to make more, to grow your business because you know what's going on in your business. Absolutely, because the success of the operation brings the success of your mission. It goes hand in hand. Hand in hand, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, I could talk to you all day about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, what are the challenges that you experience or that you witness with your clients since COVID-19? Well, I mean, I think the challenges that my clients are experiencing are similar to, to what's going on in the world is money. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody is concerned right now about their budgets and about, you know, money and, you know, the reality with nonprofits, most of their, a lot of them, their existence is contingent on donations from other organizations who are cutting back, right. whose hours and, you know, working environments are either not, they're not even physically there. So even if they have the money to send the checks and stuff right now, some of them right. aren't even operating. So they can't give the money to the you know the different nonprofits as they would be because of you know whatever virtual operation situation is and then you know people are just cutting back and one of the first places that you know businesses cut back is on donations because it's 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 what they're doing with their excess um you know and, and it's understandable they're trying to take what they have to to fund their operations that's so, true that's true. You know, yeah. So one of the bigger things is that is obviously a lot of you know my nonprofit clients and you know union clients or whatever are just wondering and worrying like are all my donors going to come back? Are they gonna you know give like they gave last year? Right. And then you know the next thing is all right. We are now in this you know virtual work mode. Right. Um, well, who is getting my mail? Um, who's, you know, taking the checks to the bank? Who's watching the store is, you know, sort of always my go-to example. Right. Um, so now that we're, you know, getting into an environment where it's harder to do and have the checks and balances that are normally in place for operations and, you know, the financial management. So, that's also one of the challenges that I think, you know, a lot of my businesses are dealing with is just how do we keep things flowing right. um, while we're all working remotely? Um, because, you know, you, you don't want anybody to have too much power, but at the same, you know, and, and authority to do something. But at the same time, you know, when people are all over, all over the place and at their home, business still has to happen somehow. Right. So I would say that those two are, you know, probably the biggest challenges that my organizations are seeing. So let me ask you this. Now, I totally get that your donors and certain size organizations may not be able to support, at least in the beginning phases of this COVID-19, may not have been able to support like they have in the present, and I'm sorry, in the past. In the past, right. And, um, what about the larger firms that have the ability to support and stand to benefit more by contributing to nonprofits? Because let's face it, when it comes down to larger organizations that are business operations, 
they are mainly donating and they have funds put aside specifically in their budget for nonprofits. And they typically have to go year after year getting rid of those funds in order for them to qualify for a certain tax break yeah. every year. So what are your thoughts and your intake on that as it pertains to nonprofit in general, whether it's your clients or not? You know, should they still be, if they're not, should they still be considering their practices of donations and stuff? Because in the long run, yes, all the companies need to figure out ways that they can cut back for a to for their survival to to extend their their survival tactics a little bit longer so that they don't hurt in a sense of closing the doors or laying off their people if they're the type of companies that care about their their human resources right. you know so you're going everybody has to face even i had to face those challenges of how do we maintain stability until things turn around for I'm us? Pivot and restructuring. Exactly, without hurting and jeopardizing the company, but at the same time, um, weeping the benefits that we gain from as business owners and operations. What are your thoughts about those that are able to still make those donations if they're not? Yeah. Um, you know, one of the things, like I said, it's still, there's still some issues because of the logistics of it all. Like I was saying or like some of them are like, okay, yeah, we're still fine, but we're, our office just isn't even, you know, operating up to par right now. So, you know, the normal process is it takes 10 days to, <clears throat> to do a check, blah, blah, blah. But now we're, you know, we're only in every other day, whatever the situation is. So instead of 10 days, it's taking 20 or 30 or whatever. Right. Um, so there's still challenges associated with that. But, you know, I, I agree with you 100%. There are still many businesses out there that are able and willing and wanting to, to, you know, to make their same contributions. And as a matter of fact, the time that they're more, more so paying attention and considering that is now because, you know, December 31 is, is, is right around the corner. And this is when they start to make those assessments and say, okay, now we need to get rid of. Got to get this money out there so we can save money with Uncle Sam. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. So this is when, you know, definitely, you know, some of the, the bigger corporations are like, honestly asking, can we give our donation now for next year? Um, because okay. we have it to give. Right. Um, and you know this is the way you know the way the way that our bookkeeping is set up, so right. to speak. We need to do it now, you know, to support your. You know, I have one organization that does like an annual convention mm -hmm. or, or conference where they do educational programs and business professional trainings. And right. you know, yeah, so some of the bigger sponsors are like, all right, we want to get in, you know, here in this last quarter. And get ours on the books now so that we can go ahead and write that off for this year. And, you know, I, I think that's, that's, that's great. Right. Um, that, you know, keeps the, the circle going around and around uh, for the nonprofit organizations. Um, but I, I, you know, I would just say everybody's got to get creative now. Yes, they do. Yes. Get out there and do a podcast, do some social media connections that's and right. just, you know, stay in, stay connected with the, your, your potential donors, um, even in COVID and even with the challenging circumstances. That's right. Just make sure that you, they are aware that you're still here. You're still in need. Yeah. You're still operating. Um, you know, I'm here. That's right. I totally agree with you. In fact, you know, one of the things that I would recommend to nonprofits is, target those companies that uh, strategically that is capable of still making those contributions whether you've dealt with them before or not target them don't sit there and be afraid of the ask because you're in the wrong business if you're afraid of asking absolutely you're in the wrong business you're in a charity um, industry where all you're doing is having your hand out <laughs> and well, that's and that's COVID aside you know COVID's just right hurdles that's probably that's you know right. going to come their way that's yeah right. absolutely 
you they have pay. to be out there pounding and searching yeah. for new avenues to get that money. Like That's right. And, and you may have to restructure who your target is because of COVID, but you still have to keep moving on because it's not going to come to you on a silver platter. The way things no. go on with the government, they're trying to figure out, they're thinking about it, they're still thinking, and they're thinking, and they're thinking, and here's a little bit to hold you over. But you can't yeah. rely on that. You can't rely on things coming to you easily. And that's with any, yeah. any type of business. Yeah. Um, right. well, I would suggest that not only do you uh, revisit who you target uh, for sponsorship and as donors, uh, but how you target them. And, and, and uh, you know, don't get rid of the ones that you have um, dealt with in the past. Just understand that they may not be able to help you today or tomorrow, yeah. but yeah. it's good to keep them up. To keep those relationships open. Keep them um, abreast. That's right. On yes. what's going on. More importantly, they need to um, look at other avenues and other resources as we stated i lost my train of thought <laughs> but other avenues and resources to help them keep moving along is it to me for what i do for a living there's always an easy solution in play as long as you take the moment to think about it and be realistic about the expectation that, that right simple. there is 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 a big important word realistic That's about the expectations that I think, you know, is, is just something that both businesses, nonprofits, that everybody has to, to take into account and understand. Wow. Um, yeah. You know, it's just, there's, there's wants, there's needs and wishes, but at the end of the day, realistic expectations really? is what really puts things in the right perspective so that you can do what, you know, what you need to do. Absolutely. In fact, to support what we're trying to share here with people about being realistic, I have never once said to a client, this is, I can guarantee you we're going to get this much. We're going to increase you by this amount. It organically happened that way. Our 70 to 77% margin increase as a success rate for our clients organically happened organically. And, and it is based on trusting this the process that we designed specifically mm -hmm. for you and you only trusting that process trusting the resources us and allowing mm -hmm. it to take place but again mm -hmm. everything that you and i talked about here natasha integrity accountability you mm -hmm. have to inform people what's going on, what the status is, the highs and the lows. Absolutely. They want to hear the real from you yeah. when they're in order to invest in you. I mean, yeah. it only makes sense. You have to date them. You have to date your donors. They want to yeah. know. If you have a marquee event every year where you have your big ask, you need to be engaging with them leading up to that. Before, year. yes. And throughout yes. the whole year, sharing them information, engaging with them on a lower scale for events, virtually or in person. You have to be providing them with information that you, for your audience, is of value for them. Right. And after you get that money, you have to continue. You absolutely them. have to continue. Uh, yes. So, That's why, you know, the, the basis, whatever the reason is that they're, they've chosen to invest in you, they want to see and get that same value out of their investment all year long. It doesn't mean you know, every day of the week, but yes, you have to be putting into them, sewing into them, advertising or whatever the, you know, the agreement is, um, you have to, to value that relationship all year in order for them to hopefully come back or then to tell somebody, you know, the word, word of mouth, first of all, is, is the biggest, you know, business opportunity for anybody. So you know, if you're demonstrating and being who, the, what your, all your beautiful marketing, you know, information says, well, then 
that that has to be an ongoing thing well, and well, your donors will absolutely appreciate it spread the word or you know just it, it grows from there absolutely they they have to walk that talk they have to actually live by that mission and core value that yeah. they wrote don't write it just be writing it because it sounds good right. live it live it all right, so we're going to wrap up with one of the things that I love doing, a fun fact question. So, we, you know, depending on, um, we don't know exactly when this interview will be released, but um, it is around the holiday season. The holidays are fastly approaching us. So clearly we talked about the fourth quarter a couple of times in our chit chat or, you know, coming near. So what is your favorite holiday and why? That's one part of the question. Well, two parts. Now, the third one is, which one of them are you looking forward to the most even during the COVID-19 that we're going through? Oh my gosh. That's tough. Um, I'm going to have to, to stick with, with the fourth quarter. I, I'm a fall baby. Um, and, and, and go with Christmas. Ooh. And, um, it's not so much Christmas day that I'm even referring to. It's the anticipation. It's the buildup. It's the love that, you know, is in the air during the whole season. Although people do kind of get crazy with all the, the gifts and the shopping and stuff, but the feeling that you get in your heart, uh, when you're out and you're looking for special gifts for special people, um, I have little ones, the looks in their eyes when they open their gifts for Christmas morning. But even besides, besides you know, the actual day, there's so much that happens in my family and my home. We decorate, you know, we have lots of moments of togetherness and just celebration with other family. Um, so I, I would have to say the anticipation, the spirit of love and giving and laughter that kind of goes with the Christmas holiday season is definitely, you know, something that I look forward to every year. Um, even in COVID, you know, it's, it's 100% going to be different this year, um, but I, I'm, I'm thinking smaller, more intimate, and just like, you know, sort of the conversation that we've had with businesses, we're going to pivot. We're going to get creative. We might be doing drive-bys at grandma's house this year or whatever, but the spirit is still going to be there um, in the season. I'm going to, to do my part to make sure of that. <laughs> awesome. I love that. I love that. Don't go anywhere, Natasha. Sit tight. There's um, other things that I want us to chat about.